Hey golfers and welcome back to the Second Swing of Thoughts podcast and well today is a fun one. Um, I'm joined by Michael Geiger. He's been on the show several times. You know who he is. He's also been on the YouTube channel plenty. Um, you know everything about the new clubs this year and so I figured uh, no one better to have than you in here for reviewing the Golf WRX Members Choice Voting. Um, if you haven't first of all checked out GolfWRX.com, um, it's a great place if you are a golf gear junkie um, to kind of learn more about new equipment, to um, converse with other golf club junkies as well. They have a giant community there at GolfWRX.com and um, they hosted their annual Members Choice Voting for 2023 recently and so we partnered with them to kind of present that if you will and um, we wanted to run through the categories and the results for you if you haven't seen them yet. So. Um, Michael, first of all, this was a lot of fun to kind of join up with the team there at mm-hmm. GolfWorks. Uh, they're, like we mentioned, they're, they're just club junkies like we are. So, um, but I think as we go through the results here today, we can kind of discuss in a little bit and analyze each, each category. But there were some kind of winners and losers brand-wise throughout this. And I think that becomes apparent. Definitely. I think the Members' Choice project as a whole is a real interesting, uh, real interesting insight into kind of where the sort of the state of the industry right now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have a, a pretty good feel for, you know, all you need to do is look in tour players bags to see kind of where they're feeling. Um, you know, given our, our deep roster of master fitters, we have a pretty good feel of kind of with the, the fitters point of view. But here, it's really, it's your point of view, essentially, it's, it's uh, just the, the gearheads at home. And so um, it'll be really interesting to, yeah, kind of parse through uh, kind of the big winners and losers. Here. Yeah, and I think one thing too, even looking through the results, is you, there is a little bit maybe of a um, deviation, if you will, in the in the members that vote to maybe a more skilled or more kind of a um, you know you kind of see the the drivers and the irons that mm-hmm. end up being high on this list. It seems to be those players that are skilled and play a lot of golf and and have that background. So, um, but with that said, let's let's dive in here. We'll start at the top with the driver. Um, so I'm going to just simply run through the top five of each category and then we'll kind of, I'll get Michael's thoughts on, on that top five and, and if there were any surprises, if there were any that, you know, based on our, what our fitters have said were expected and, and so forth. So um, with driver, uh, that was the first category that um, GolfWorks, you know, reported on, if you will, or released on their blog. And uh, number five was Callaway Paradigm Triple Diamond. Number four was Ping G430 LST. Staying with Ping at number three was the G430 Max, and then Titleist actually took the top two spots with Driver with the TSR2, and then number one was the TSR3. So, uh, Michael, obviously Titleist and Ping are the big winners with the Driver. Yeah, I think Driver's a, a great place to start. Uh, one, because obviously it's it's usually the most, kind of the, the flashiest, most popular product, but also because I think this really sets a tone for the entire Member's Choice poll. Yeah. Uh, you, you really see the kind of the the manufacturers on two-year cycles sort of yeah. rise to the top. There's sort of a, uh, a quality over quantity vibe to uh, th- this driver list in particular. You see Ping and Titleist, you know, they don't, they're not known to, to rush out product. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they, they take their time and they, their R&D teams are, are in the lab, so to speak, um, for, for extended periods of time. And uh, you see that, that quality kind of bear itself out um, with one through four on this list. Oh, absolutely. And we noticed it right away. Um, you know, the Titleist TSR drivers were released, you know, in the, towards the end of the summer of 2022. And, you know, that's when they kind of went through their tour testing phase, um, kind of in the early, you know, maybe in the spring of 2022. So they've been out and in the fitting bays for a while now. And to see them maintain the momentum through the end of 2022, mm-hmm. through 2023 now, as, you know, other manufacturers have released their new drivers for this year and to have Titleist still take the top spot is very impressive for them. And I mean, the Titleist Speed Project that they have been promoting quite a bit, I mean, there's clearly some merit to it with the way these results look. Yeah, it's very interesting. You know, I was I was really intrigued when the kind of the Titleist Speed Project, uh, sort of all that marketing came out. Yeah. You know, they, they put, put forward some pretty big claims and they, they backed it up, the, the distance numbers, um, especially looking back to sort of the kind of the TSI era, yeah. um, they've, they've really it's been a, a quantum leap in ball speed and um, really just a fantastic result for Titleist one and two. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you have the TSR three as the number one driver at twenty percent of the vote from the Golf WRX members. So that's a pretty large contingent of the of the community there um, going for the TSR three, and then right behind it was fourteen percent was the TSR two. So. Um, right there, you have over a third of the members there choosing a Titleist driver as the best driver of 2023. Very impressive. And then 
ping with two models right behind and followed by the Cowboy Paradigm Triple Dime, which has been very successful on tour this year as well. So um, we're going to jump down to Fairywood now, um, where similar in terms of the brand um, names that pop up in this one. Mm -hmm. So once again, at number five is the Callaway Paradigm, just a standard model, however. Um, then number four is the Titleist TSR3. Number three is the TaylorMade Stealth 2 Plus, which I thought was interesting to see TaylorMade yeah. leap at number three there. Uh, number two is the G430 Max from Ping, and then number one, the Titleist TSR2. So Titleist wins both of the kind of metal wood categories, if you will. Um, what are your thoughts on these this top five here? Uh, really, the, the, the TaylorMade name jumps yeah. out. Um, you know, not to not to spoil anything, but there's not a whole lot of tailor-made representation sort of throughout all these categories. Yeah. But the the Stealth Two Plus Fairway, um, a fantastic club. It's got so much adjustability. That that 50 gram weight um, was really a, a quite an innovation in the in kind of the adjustability side of things. Um, but yeah, I think while this was an excellent club, there the, the absence on other lists is is noteworthy. I think. Yeah, I think the like you mentioned the the that huge weight I think is the the innovation of that club is what really kind of um, lifts it maybe above um, other Stealth Two products this mm -hmm. year in terms of just the usability and and I guess the eye catching quality to other golfers. But I think I wanted to just touch on the TSR two versus TSR three dynamic because it seems like we had a little bit of a flop there in the order of operations, right? Mm -hmm. So the the more popular driver was the TSR three which I think speaks to the more, you know, maybe how forgiving that is for a low spin model. And then in terms of the fairy wood, the TSR2 is now the runaway favorite. And I think that speaks to how hot that club is, even though it might be the quote unquote higher MOI fairy wood of the yep. two, there's still some speed that title is packed in there. I think it's so interesting with the TSR2 and TSR3, uh, you know, a long time ago, we might have thought, okay, TSR2 is sort of for the mid handicap, TSR3 is for the low handicap. But you've kind of seen everything from kind of the technology to the look, everything about these clubs, while the golf was initially bigger in terms of kind of the handicap, they've, they've started to sort of converge a little bit. And yeah. you'll see a TSR2 in a, in a professional's bag, you'll see a TSR3 um, in someone like me's bag. So uh, Titleist decision to sort of make those TSR2 and TSR3 a little more interchangeable is, uh, it's an interesting move and it, it seems to be paying off. Right, and it's almost like now it's it's even more about what you just like to look at as a golfer, because right. um, the performance it, it overlaps a little bit where you can, you know, get the performance that you need, but you don't have to look at something that you maybe don't want to, right. um, which I think is kudos to Titleist for that. And then um, I'll just mention Ping and how, you know, the 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 Ping Woods, the forgiveness uh, that has never changed, but really this year they upped the ball speed there, both in the driver and then certainly in the fairy woods. Mm -hmm. And so to see them at number two with the G430 Max is not really a surprise either. It's absolutely not. I think Ping's, uh, sort of their aesthetics on their woods are a little bit more polarizing than Titleist's, yeah. but in terms of pure performance, uh, it, it's right there with it. They're, those mm -hmm. those one and two are really, I would say, in a class of their own. Right, and I kind of wanted to sort of segue from the fairy woods to the hybrids for Ping, and we'll, you'll see why here in a second, but uh, so the, the hybrid category here, the top five, uh, number five, Stealth 2 Plus, number four, the Callaway Paradigm, number three, the Titleist TSR3, and the number two was the Titleist TSR2, but um, Ping G430 wins the hybrid category in commanding fashion, too. This was, I believe, if you go down the list, one of, if not the most dominant victory in terms of the vote. Mm -hmm. At 30% of the voters selecting Ping G430 as the number one hybrid, and then number two at 14% was the TSR2. So um, pretty convincing win for the G430 hybrid here. It's incredibly convincing, and the margin of victory, I think, is even more impressive when you think about, you know, you mentioned it at the top. There's sort of a, a little bit of maybe a selection bias. These are, these, you know, these being the diehard golf fans, their, their handicap probably tends to be a bit on the lower yeah. side. Um, but the G430 having, you know, more than doubling up the number two slot, mm -hmm. Um, which makes sense in a way. I mean, it's such a it suits such a wide range of golfers. It's really a, a populist hybrid. It um, inc you know tests incredibly well, and uh, I think Ping over the years has really improved sort of the acoustics and the feel of their of their hybrids and mm -hmm. woods. And it's really you know Ping is is one of the most reputable names in golf, but to to dominate a category like this is is noteworthy. Yeah. I mean, it's they've been really really. Um, reliable in the hybrids and the fairy woods for a long time now. I mean, our fitters have not said enough good things about this hybrid. And I remember even the initial testing we got to do with Kevin Kraft back in, you know, 
actually at the end of 2022 now is when we got our hands on that and able to test it for you know the January release and he was that was the club he was you know most excited about from that whole sort of section of of, of testing that we did was the G430 hybrid how playable it was how hot it was uh, but still had the ping forgiveness and launch capabilities that right. you you came to you get used to from ping so uh, and then you know Titleist again those medals uh, I mean what else can you really say they're they're uh, clearly highly respected in the golf community at golf golfworks.com and um, you know, like we mentioned, I'm going to say it again. These individuals are as much of a gearhead as anybody. Um, they're diving into, they're testing their stuff, they're looking at all the TrackMan numbers. I mean, these these people are, are diehards, and so it it speaks volumes to see the Titleist TSR series and the Ping G430 series continuously pop up in the top five in these in these voting rankings here. Absolutely, and then you know Callaway and Taylor made sort of rounding out the top yeah. five. Um, you know, respectable showings for them, but again, uh, you see. Ping and Titleist. Uh, it's it's been a theme with these metal woods, and uh, they they continue to dominate. So in the irons now, we got some new blood, um, and uh, not terribly surprising based on f feedback from the fitters throughout the year. But nonetheless, um, it it does speak to again this community and how they recognize the performance mm -hmm. when it's there. So with the irons, the top five, number five is the T100 from Titleist, number four Mizuno Pro 223. Number three, Shrixon, ZX5 Mark II. That's, I believe, the only player's distance model on here. So that would be essentially the number one player's distance model here. Uh, number two, Ping I230. And then number one, Shrixon ZX7 Mark II. So mentioned some new blood. We have Mizuno and we have two Shrixon models here, Michael. Um, Shrixon irons, not terribly surprising, but I, it's still cool to see them kind of get the love. No, I think it's it's really the the trend. I feel like we mentioned in every Shrixon video, whether it's testing or, or just talking about them, they just continue to sort of quietly rise up in the mm -hmm. ranks, and sort of in the consciousness of golfers' minds. They, you know, you might not traditionally think of them the way you think of Titleist and Ping, but they've continued to just stack good release on good release on good release. And you see it on, on tour. You see, you know, Brooks Kepka thriving um, with the with the number one uh, iron here. But more importantly, you see it in, in golf fans everywhere. And you see Srixon continuing to uh, bolster their reputation, uh, especially in the iron category. Yeah, because I th I mean, two years ago with the original kind of ZX five, ZX seven irons, those are the ones that really kind of grabbed the golfer's attention, and you know maybe had players that weren't necessarily at that moment gonna upgrade to new irons, but you got their attention, like, okay, Shrixon is a name I need to remember when it's time. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of those players in 2023, it was time for new irons, and Shrixon was at the top of their, their mind as a, as a brand to think of, and ZX5 or ZX7 Mark II irons were right there. And I mean, it's, I think the look of them is so inviting for a player's cavity iron, or in the case of the zx 5s a player's distance iron, and yet, they blend together so seamlessly in a combo set too, which is something that I know our fitters love and are, you know, in any chance they get, they want to try to get a combo set into a player because there's such an advantage to be had there. Definitely. I think with Strixon, I think Hideki's Masters win was sort of the starting gun for me of, of yeah. really kind of kicking off this, this really kind of this ascendancy the last few years. Uh, but it's just, they're just such solid irons. The ZX7 Mark II, uh, probably the most consistent spin numbers of any iron that, that mm -hmm. I've hit this year. Um, Remember that testing, actually. That was it's, crazy. It's it's unbelievable that you can see it on our, our YouTube yes. channel. Um, <laughs> but really, really solid. And then obviously, you know, paying not too far behind. Um, those two, the I-230 and the ZX-7 Mark II, um, sort of kind of separated themselves a little bit um, in the voting. Um, you know, the I-230 is another gorgeous ping iron. Um, slightly mm -hmm. longer blade length, more forgiving than, say, a blueprint, but a, a really, really spectacular club. Yeah, and then, you know, I, I also wanted to throw in the Mizuno Pro 223 for a discussion because um, we know about the Mizuno feel, uh, grain flow forging, you know, nothing feels like a Mizuno, right? And I actually, you know, think that's one of those kind of slogans out there that is very true, where Mizuno's forging is just different than the mm -hmm. rest in the industry. Um, but then I was very surprised by the ball speed and kind of the the... I guess how hot the face was of the Mizuno Pro 223 iron. So for the golfer out there that's looking for Mizuno classic feel, you know, a slim iron that's not gonna, you know, throw you off at a dress, and then you want some speed, 
Mizuno Pro 223. I know our fitters loved it this year for that player. The, the fitters loved it. I think, you know, with the 221 and the 225, there, there's kind of a natural expectation for golfers that they'll do some sort of combo set. But, you know, the, sort of the feedback we've gotten is the 223 sort of stands on its own. It's it, the way it kind of the forgiveness sort of progresses throughout the set where you still get that kind of real classic kind of compact Mizuno look in the short irons. But you get a pretty forgiving look in the longer irons. It's uh, it's a really another versatile club, probably more towards the better player, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it fits a wide range of handicaps. Right, and uh, yeah, like we mentioned, you know, this this community voting probably a little bit more of the the better player versus a mid or high handicap, which is why you get some sort of player, mostly players irons mm -hmm. in the top five here. But nonetheless, um, I also wanted to mention too, like T T one hundred makes it here, and you know they it's almost kind of. I wouldn't say it's unfair because Titleist isn't going to change their release times based on GolfWorks members' choice voting necessarily. But you wonder if you know the Titleist irons had been available and you know the, mem the members voting, you know they could learn about them a little bit more mm -hmm. if this new T series would have been up there a little bit. But nonetheless, still, you know Titleist has been in every category here to this point. No, and I think it speaks to just again the value of there's there's real quality used kind of prior gen mm -hmm. irons out there, and so you see. You know, maybe a, a, a previous model, previous generation T100. Maybe the price has dropped a little bit. Now we got the new release. So these are still irons that really compete with with brand new stuff. Um, and of course, they're available at Second Swing. Oh yeah. Uh, well, all of these are. That's the that's the best part. So, um, all right. Now we're gonna kind of get into the short game um, and with the wedges here. And this is, I talked a little bit about in the hybrid category how. The G430 dominated in the vote column, while the bigger, I guess, margin of victory is in the wedges. Yep. Um, so we'll start at the bottom with, well, the number five here with the wedges, the Cleveland CBX Zip Core, which I'm a big fan of that product as a forgiving cavity back wedge, but mm -hmm. still kind of has that, that those spin characteristics. Uh, then number four, well, I guess tied for third, we had two wedges, the Ping Glide 4.0 and the TaylorMade Milled Grind 3. And then number two at the was the Cleveland RTX six zip core, and then number one, not surprisingly, Titleist Vokey SM nine wedges. So um, I just wanted to give some love to that CBX zip core because yeah. I think there's a there's so many wedges out there that are not inputting forgiveness in the design where there are a lot of golfers out there that need probably some forgiveness. Like they play a game improvement iron set or even a player's distance mm -hmm. iron set. They get down to their nine iron, their pitching wedge, and then it's a pretty stark difference between, say, the last iron of that set, and then they go into like a gap wedge or a 54 degree wedge, whatever it might be, and it's like a very differently designed club. And so with the zip core, or the CBX zip core, you get kind of that still that same forgiveness, but you don't lose the wedge type feel with the zip, the, you know, Cleveland's kind of groove technology there too. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's a really good product and probably for my from my vantage point, my perspective should be higher on this list. I, I really like the, the, it's a great product, I think. I think there's a lot of equipment companies out there that essentially try to create a, a sort of a version of their SM9 yeah. and it, it's tough to beat the real thing and, and the voting shows that, mm -hmm. it, you know, good luck. Uh, <laughs> but I love that Cleveland kind of saw there's kind of a vacuum and, and they filled it and, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of golfers out there that, that need a little bit of forgiveness. You know, they might think they need it in the irons, but the wedges, it, it doesn't hurt as well. But we should mention, I mean, the SM9 mm -hmm. basically yeah. got 37% of the vote or so, uh, just, just lapped the field. Uh, I feel like people reload their, their Titleist wedges the way they kind of do their tax yeah. returns every year. <laughs> it's just, they just sort of, uh, they, they look gorgeous, they feel great. Um, you see so many people even using them kind of up to pitching wedge. Uh, it's it's a phenomenal club, and and I don't see the the Titleist Vokey dominance stopping anytime soon. No, I mean he's I mean Bob Vokey is probably the greatest wedge designer out there. I mean there's obviously a bunch of people that have you know made their mark in mm. club design, but um, Bob has certainly done his share. And I think the other part too that I know our fitters love is just the different array of options. You know, there's so many grind options. Yep. You have lofts from 46 to 62. Um, and you can take it so many directions with a player that might use their wedges very differently depending on the loft. Or if you have someone that plays their wedges the same exact way for every shot, mm -hmm. you can do that too with the Vokey SM9 wedges. So 
Um, they're, they did a really, really good job, and they continue to do that with every new wedge, you know, line or wedge release. There's just all those grinds, all those lofts. They always have a leg up on the competition just because of that. Definitely. I think they've set really the standard in terms of offering different kind of grind and balance options. I think, to be fair, a lot of other, you know, equipment companies are, are catching up. I think TaylorMade also does a great mm -hmm. job. Um, they even have sort of their, their tiger grind. There's, there's a lot of different kind of ways you can tweak uh, not just the loft of your wedges, but but the grind, and and that's uh, as always, that's a great question for your for your second swing fitter. Oh, absolutely, and so that's where you know now we kind of get onto the the green, right? And we're rolling some putts here, um, and I like that Golf Works Golf WRX they split this into two categories here because um, there's I think there's a segment of of individuals that is willing to you know spend a little bit on a putter. Mm -hmm. And then there's the individual that might want to still save on that putter. And so we have the best putters over 300. And then we also have, after that, the best putters under $300. Um, so in the top five in terms of putters over $300, um, very interesting results in terms of the, uh, the brands here, right? So we have the number five is the Lab Mez 1 Max. And then the number four is the Lab Link. Number three, Lab Directed Force 2.1. Number two is the Scotty Cameron Super Select Newport 2. And number one, the Scotty Cameron Phantom X 5.5. Um, now, this was very contest, like closely contested voting here, but kind of cool to see you know, Lab get in the mix. Mm -hmm. And then also two kind of what's becoming iconic with the 5.5 and then the iconic Newport 2 also stay up as high as it did with Scotty Cameron. Yeah, I think in terms of kind of the premium putter side, you see sort of the uh, the established front runner yep. getting chased by kind of the young yeah. upstart. And and I think Lab is uh, a brand that kind of the wider public maybe isn't as familiar with, uh, but you, you're starting to see, you know, golfers like Lucas Glover and, and Charles Howell III. Mm -hmm. you, you see these, these players that are, uh, you know, traditionally great ball strikers, but have struggled on the greens suddenly start to find form. And, I, it, you know, it seems to me that the golfers are, are, are kind of picking up on that. That's what I was just gonna say. Is like it seems like if a, if you, you know, pay attention to the golf, the pro golf landscape, and you're, you see someone that might have traditionally maybe struggled with putter for years and years, it seems like they find an answer with, you know, one of these lab models. Yep. Um, you know, Adam Scott's another one who, has been, for two decades now, really perhaps one of the best ball strikers on tour. And you know, I there's pro kind of that what if there. You know, what if he had been a consistent putter, how much more would he have won? And now he's using a lab putter and he's maintaining his consistency in, in you know, his season ending finishes, um, his um, performance throughout the season. I mean, he's, he's up there and obviously Lucas Glover having won these last, you know, these tournaments back to back here towards the end of the tour season. Um, his putting numbers have been superb over the last mm -hmm. kind of month. And that's with him getting in that, I believe it's using the Mez Point one max, I believe. Is, I believe. That, is that the model he's using? So, which is number five on this list. So, there's something there to the technology and sort of the extreme high MOI designs of these lab putters that, and I've, it, I mean, it, it clearly it works. I mean, there's something there to it. I think. Super impressed. I, I'm I'm really curious to see kind of the way we talked about the way Sverkson has continued to to kind of stack on good release after good release. I'm curious to see if Lab can, yeah. can kind of keep this momentum going and. And, and maybe kind of unseat Scotty Cameron, which, you know, it sounds like heresy, but uh, you, <laughs> yeah. you, you never know. I think there's almost a larger conversation here, too, about just the design of putter that the, the average golfer should be using. I think there's so many players using a blade. They've been yep. using a, whether it's a, an answer style or whether it's even something smaller than that, they've been using the same thing for years and years, and that's all they've known. But there's just something about the performance of a larger mallet I mean a lab may or may not be extreme for what you might like to look at as in a putter mm -hmm. but I as someone who uses a ping hardwood putter which is a spaceship looking metal piece um, at the end of a stick right it's eye-catching it is certainly eye-catching and distracting I imagine for a lot of players but um, as someone who uses that and has greatly improved on the greens I think there's something to be said about the forgiveness and MOI that you can get with a mallet design that for, I think would overweigh the sort of aesthetic piece for a lot of players if they just tried it. Um, that's just my take on it. I think mallets are the way to go with putters. But um, I think because you see right here, there's four out of the five 
top five putters here are mallets. I, I think if you just look on tour, I mean, Scotty yeah. can't, or excuse me, Scotty Scheffler uh, was really one of the last sort of blade holdouts, um, and you know, might have cost himself a major or two this year by not switching to a mallet. Now he finally has. Um, but you just go down the list, you know, Roy McIlroy, mallet, John Rahm, mallet, Scotty Scheffler, yeah. mallet, Victor Hovland, mallet. Th these guys. Unless you're Tiger Woods, a blade might not be uh, what's best for you. And, you know, no matter what it looks like, uh, if, it, if it gets the ball yeah. in the hole in fewer strokes, I'd, I'd give it a look. Yeah, so I guess that's my little mini sermon, if you will, on if you're listening to this, struggling with putters. Preach. Um, maybe the mallet is something you should experiment with. But uh, So speaking of some more putters here, we're going to go to the sub $300 category. I know this is the category that I would be most uh, you know, inclined to listen to here, uh, trying to save a little bit of buck. Um, so we've got a couple of tailor-made ones to kick off here that tied for fifth. The TP Hydro Blast, uh, both the Bandit and the Soto. So a couple of different kind of um, mallets, mallet designs there. Uh, number four, the Odyssey 2-Ball 10, classic design. Um, number three, Odyssey White Hot OG 2-Ball. So you kind of get a lot of that 2-Ball, which mm -hmm. when that was first introduced, I, I can't imagine Odyssey was expecting it to be, you know, this prevalent in golf 20, 30 years yep. later. Um, number two, Ping Answer, another iconic model. And then the number one is the White Hot OG7 from Odyssey. So once again, very similar actually to the to the over 300 uh, category where you have some new kind of mallet designs that mm -hmm. take most of the shape of the top five. And then you have a classic blade model there at number two with the Ping Answer. So uh, what do you see in this top five here? The, the Odyssey kind of white hot OG phenomenon, you know, taking two of the top three spots is, is the biggest thing for me. I think uh, it's, I'm always fascinated in, in kind of golf equipment that that progress is not it's not just a 45 degree angle up. There's there's kind of there's plateaus and then there's there's big breakthroughs. And I think we've seen Odyssey might have sort of cracked the code yeah. 20, 30 years ago with this kind of their, their their famous insert. And while they've made, you know, tons of tweaks and kind of aesthetic changes around the perimeter, at the end of the day, that that white hot OG insert feel is is what people want, you know, yep. even in 2023. Right. It's it's amazing how much that has been demanded, and they they went away from it, made subtle yep. changes to it, um, and in kind of the last I don't know five to ten years, they've done the micro hinges, they've mm -hmm. done the the white hot I think micro star star hinge. There's different things that they added to it, and so many players just said no. Give me the classic white hot insert that's all i want on this putter and the face and with the white hot og line that's been just super successful they all they really did was kind of not even really modernize but they just kind of remade all these classic designs that they kind of had produced in their basically the early 2000s mm -hmm. and you know now you have john rom winning seemingly every week at least at the beginning of 2023 the guy couldn't miss um and now you have also the the two ball which is another shape that again at the time they probably didn't think would last or be as relevant in golf as it mm -hmm. still is today and now every odyssey mallet series that is released there's a two ball version in there somewhere if not multiple yeah very impressive and then you know as you mentioned uh, you know two spots for tight or for tailor made mm -hmm. um while you know they're not littering kind of the rest of the categories a, a real solid finish for them with the mm -hmm. with the under 300 putters yeah and then again I, I will throw out the ping answer again uh just in the, that, that classic you know, that, that answer design is so iconic. And I don't know if enough golfers realize how iconic it really is. Because right. you think of Newport and you think of Answer and you think other, basically all these other brands have copied the Answer, which was the sort of the first kind of heel toe weighted blade design that was in the golf industry. And now the Newport, these other brands have copied it. And so to see, I, I like that it got its recognition here as um, the number two in the sub 300 category. Uh, let's move on to rangefinders here, and then we'll wrap up with two golf ball categories. So, rangefinder is an interesting one because, well, we do take in trades and rangefinders, and we saw rangefinders, and there's obviously a couple brands that come to mind. But I was very surprised at a couple of the results here in the top five. So, at number five, we had the Nikon Cool Shot Pro, uh, two stabilized, and then we have. This is kind of the brand I thought would pop up here pretty much the rest of the time, right? So number four was the Bushnell Tour V5 shift. And then number three was the Bushnell Tour V6 shift. So number two, Precision Pro NX10 Slope. That's the one that I kind of am surprised to see here, but mm -hmm. kudos to Precision Pro for getting up there. And then 
number one Bushnell Pro X3. Uh, so I know you're probably not changing your rangefinder out to all these models every right. week, but um, what are your thoughts on on the rangefinder category here? Yeah, rangefinders are interesting. I think it's it's a it's a product that maybe people change the least. Uh, I think so. Particularly yeah. maybe apart from irons. Um, I think maybe you're like me for a while. You just sort of just want something that just says the number, how far it yeah. is. But I, I think it's worth, uh, even if it, there tend to be a little bit more on the expensive side, maybe less so for a Precision Pro. But I think it's worth taking a look. There's really some some intriguing technology that's come out in recent years. I mean, just by the name of the Precision Pro, kind of that slope technology, uh, mm -hmm. you can really get distances that kind of adjust for for elevation, which is which is a very um, a yeah. very interesting development. Um, yeah. And there's there's all sorts of Bushnell is really at the top of the line with yeah. this stuff. And there's there's all kinds of of technological improvements that they've yeah. made. Uh, but if you haven't, you know, if you have a, a rangefinder from you know five to ten years ago, I, I would seriously give it, take these uh, take these seriously. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those where it's these there's subtle refinements that are made in these that actually make a big impact. And even something as simple as brightening the, I guess, scope that you look at. It's so much it, with these. Range finders, the Pro X3, I was down at the PJ show. That's the number one on this list. I was on the PJ show at the Bushnell kind of area and testing it out. And it, it's almost like it, someone is shining an, another light in the room as you're looking through. Um, so you have that plus what Bushnell's done with their elements feature when they're able to yeah. kind of calculate the distance, not just for slope, but also for temperature, air pressure, things like that. Um, it's kind of crazy that they're able to have that in one little device there. And so now obviously these other brands are kind of taking after that a little bit. And so I there, there's kudos to there for, for Bushnell for being as good as they have been for so long, but also to Precision Pro, with their slope device kind of climbing the ranks there mm -hmm. to number two. Um, so, but if there are, you know, obviously range finders are, like you mentioned, for a lot of people, it's just give me the distance and go. And that's fair. A lot of golfers don't need to spend 300, $400 on a range finder. But um, if you need another one, these are, some really good options to start, and I like we've said before, we trust the the thoughts and opinions of the golf WRX members. I, I think, particularly if you play in in you know you know Arizona versus Minnesota, yeah, you can play in Minnesota in October versus Arizona in July. 150 yards is is two very different things yes. um, with those two. So if you kind of play in those extreme elements ever, I again that's just another uh, right. another point in Bushnell's favor. Yeah, or you maybe you travel and play different areas of the country quite a bit, or the globe even. Uh, that's where this can come in real, real nice for you. So, um, all right, now we have a couple of fun ones here going to finish up. We've got golf ball categories. So um, we'll, we're going to start with tour golf balls. These are the ones that are going to be played on the PGA Tour, really all across professional tours, um, and uh, we have. One brand that I think we've still, reached a consensus still dominates the market, so we're not going to be shocked by that. But so at number five, the Shrixon Z Star Diamond. That's a kind of a new addition mm -hmm. to the Z Star line this year. Number four, TaylorMade TP Five X, and then your top three are all Titleist. At three, we've got the Pro V One X Left Dash. Number two is the Pro V One X, and number one Pro V One. Not surprised by that top three, uh, but I am kind of intrigued by the Z-Star Diamond and the TP5X making their way into the top five. Really impressive. I think uh, Strixon in particular, I think they're, TaylorMade has such a strong tour presence, mm -hmm. you know, Roy McIlroy, Tiger Woods, Scotty Scheffler, that I'm not as surprised to see TaylorMade, but the fact that Strixon is, is kind of, feels like it's, again, sort of punching above its weight uh, among some real heavyweights in the space is very impressive. Mm -hmm. Titleist, you know, it's, it's yeah. like, you know, Georgia, Alabama football, they just sort of, they just sort of reload and, and yep. you see again, um, just fantastic results in this poll. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, there's no reason to, you know, doubt yourself. If you're playing a Pro V1 or Pro V1X right now, there's no reason probably to, to change that at this point. It's just so consistent, so mm -hmm. pure. Um, to kind of regurgitate a little bit of what, you know, these golf balls are, right? The Pro V1 is going to be a little bit of the lower spinning in the long game. Uh, so the full swings can have a little bit lower launch, lower spin. Pro V1X will launch a little bit higher, have more spin for your full swings. Um, but, but both of them around the greens are very, very controllable, very, um, you know, they'll, they'll stop on a dime when you need them to, right? Um, and then that left dash one is a little bit interesting. It's gonna be the even like uh, higher launching, if you will, than right. the Pro V1X. So um, if you are, you know, someone that does really launch the ball, maybe you even have like a uh, you 
you have a you know really steep angle of attack and you kind of need that ball to jump up a little bit more than it does. That's where the left dash, and you can kind of find those in certain stores um, out there as well. So, um, but the, the Pro V1, Pro V1X family or line or series of golf mm -hmm. balls, however you want to call it, uh, the dominance that Titleist has had with that category, it's kind of unprecedented. I mean, I, now again, I'm I'm relatively young. I don't know what the golf ball space looked like in pre-2000, but basically since 2000, it's been all Titleist. Yeah, I, I think since Tylus rolled out kind of the, the original Pro V1 and the solid core golf ball, yeah. they, they sort of threw down the gauntlet, and everyone's sort of been racing to catch up to the ball technology ever since. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, and there's I won't be surprised if we vote next year, and it's the same top two, uh, but I guess we'll have to find out. So this is where the golf ball stuff gets a little bit more interesting here, uh, the non-tour golf ball. So this is going to be the golf balls that you know, mid to high handicaps probably fall into, or simply the player that doesn't want to spend 50 bucks for a dozen golf balls. Mm -hmm. um, these are going to be a lot cheaper and a lot more playable. And we actually have another dominant victory here. And having played this ball before, I can endorse the results of this voting. So at number five, the Vice Tour. Number four, Callaway Super Soft, which has been an iconic Callaway model, very successful over the years. Number three, Strixon Q-Star Tour, another great golf ball for a little bit lower compression, but still really good uh, performance. Number two, Titleist Tour Speed. And then number one in commanding fashion by, by you know margin of 16%, oh, almost 17% in the vote, mm -hmm. TaylorMade Tour Response. Um, and that's the golf ball that, that thing really does feel and play like a premium golf ball. It's, it's an excellent product. Uh, it, it's tested phenomenally, I think. I'm so fascinated, you know, you see Titleist had such a, a stranglehold on the sort of the tour ball category, but here you see five different balls, five different manufacturers. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, that that kind of budget golfer is isn't as married to a certain brand. They're they're yeah. they're anything under a certain price range, they're willing to give it a shot. And I think you really see that uh, that sort of meritocracy where, you know, Titleist, the tour speed is, is a great product and it and it took kind of the silver medal in this this area, but the TaylorMade Tour response uh, had more than double the votes, and yeah. uh, really a, a, a terrific, uh, a terrific finish for TaylorMade. I also wanted to point out, so with the TaylorMade Tour response, there is a version that kind of has that visual stripe on the ball. Um, and if you haven't seen this, you can do a quick Google search and find, you know, TaylorMade Tour response stripe golf mm -hmm. ball. Um, but I, there's these this push, you know, the last few years now to kind of what is the right visual or, or image on the golf ball to use for alignment purposes, right? And you've seen, you know, the triple track from Callaway, you've seen, you know, enhanced alignment, I believe is what Titleist Ty called it for, you know, a couple of their golf balls. I think this is the best one I've seen that really gives you A, an indication of how you roll the golf ball. I mean, if you miss hit, if you line up that, that stripe to your target and you miss hit your putt, it's gonna fly, that thing, that stripe is gonna look all over the place. And then of course, the alignment itself, lining up to the target, very clear, vivid lines for you. Um, that part, as I, I have to imagine, that's part of why this ball is so high in this category. And I think it's really good for that, you know, maybe casual or even beginner golfer to get into like improving their putting. This ball is really good. Definitely. And I think even for the best players, you know, in zero handicaps out there, any scratch golfers, if, if you're like us and you're in the winter, you know, you're locked inside yeah. and you've got a little putting green in your maybe your home office. Just as a training aid, that that yeah. that two response stripe is is fantastic. So even if, you know, maybe you're you're more a, a Pro V one, Pro V one X level golfer, um, I would give one of these balls that have sort of a that kind of training aid element to them a shot because um, you know, when it's January, uh, you can still put in some good work with your stroke. Absolutely. Another one on on that kind of same in that same category or realm is the uh, Strixon divide design right. as well. They've, I believe they've got that with um, almost all the golf balls in their lineup, but they have a divide element where basically one half of the ball is yellow, so let's say, and the other half is blue. And that kind of, where those, that line where those colors intersect is where, you know, you can, again, a similar effect where you can see if your ball is rolling end over end mm -hmm. or if it's kind of wonky. And from there, it, like you mentioned, it is a bit of a training aid for you. So um, that's going to wrap up the discussion for today. That's, we kind of, Briefly hit on all these categories, um, went through some clubs down to the golf ball even a little bit, but you can see all of the voting results at golfwrx.com and go through the member's choice uh, 
equipment category and you'll see all the voting, all the results. And then also you can check out the Golf WRX podcast. Michael and I were on for three episodes with Brian and had great discussions about these uh, results as well. So um, as golf equipment junkies, we had to hop on and kind of hash it out, right? Because that stuff is, excites us. So um, Michael, thank you for joining. Um, really good results here. Kind of a lot of it lines up with what we've seen in the fitting bays this year. So um, really good stuff. Golfers, if you haven't yet, make sure you schedule that fitting for any of these clubs that we talked about today. Um, and also get your uh, golf ball dialed in as well. Uh, very important piece. Uh, Michael, thanks for giving your insight today. Really good stuff. Drew, it was a pleasure.